Topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability explicit or implied shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Entrepreneurs Ascending. This isn't just a podcast. This is a call to action for all entrepreneurs who are tired of seeing their businesses and communities suffer while big business continues to grow by the billions. We challenge you to apply the content of our time together to create businesses that your clients can't resist, your employees love to work for, and your communities can depend on. Now is the time for Entrepreneurs Ascending. All right, and we're, we're live. We're live. How are you doing today, Brian? I'm doing well. How are you doing today, Matt? Good. I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, hey, and how are you doing out there uh, in podcast land? So we're uh, we're extremely happy to have you here today. Today, we're going to be talking. W- the title of the show is, is Business Owner, Dads, and Moms, uh, Time Versus Money. But <clears throat> this is really applicable to anybody. Anybody who really, uh, uh, they know that they want something bigger and they're trying to kind of figure that out and and they know that relationships are important and they're trying to figure that out and you know they're trying to figure out okay what's that balance of like my self-care and and you know all that as well with the wealth that they want to create because most people i mean start their money or their business because they want to create some sort of wealth right so uh so we're gonna actually have two different uh, sections today uh, we're going to first be talking about uh that time component we're going to be talking about um you know how you manage your time and and some some little tricks of the trade if you will uh some some tools we'll, we'll give you some ideas on on some steps that you can take uh because again this is this is not just a podcast this is this is a call to action so don't just listen passively it's about taking what we talk about and implementing it executing it practicing it making it better in your life and your business and uh and then that second aspect uh, of the show today that second part of the show today we're going to be talking about wealth and and money and how to how to get more wealth in your business how to get more profit and be able to to be able to leave a legacy uh we're going to even be hitting upon a little bit more about generational wealth and the importance of that so stick with us today uh, as we hit on both of those today we've got our guest uh, brian shrout he is actually one of the coaches for TFS, Time for Success, uh, our, our coaching uh, company. And uh, he actually brings a, a phenomenal background. He had an HVAC company for over 25 years and he sold it. And, you know, we were talking, we've known each other for years and we were talking a while back and, and you know, he just got this, this great passion for helping other people and supporting other people. So, you know, I'm like, hey, well, we do that. So come on and, and, and let's do that together. So, you know, he's with us and, and uh, Brian, why, why is this topic talking about, you know, family and relationships and time and money? Why, why is this important to you? Well, it's, it's really important because all essentially family owned type of businesses deal with these things on an everyday basis. How do you go about, um, dealing with running your business and then uh, deal with your family and that guilt of either, okay, I need to be at work or I need to be at home taking care of my kids or my kid has this event tonight, but I can't go to it because I have this meeting that's already scheduled. You know, trying to find that balance point between work and home, you know, and and being able to prioritize um, to give you everything that you want. And and how do you get to that point? Um, And, and, we all deal with with things in a different way, and to be able to find some some tips, some tricks to be able to make it easier um, to try to have both, you know, if, if at all possible. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's phenomenal, and, and same thing here for me too. It's 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 um, you know having having uh, a wife for 17 years and two kids uh, you know a 16 year old and and a seven year old and and trying to just w- wanting to give them a great life wanting to give them things that I never had um, versus also like that that time aspect because 
you know, kids and well, spouses even too. I mean, a lot of times uh, they, they spill. They, they don't understand why you're not yeah. there. You know, they don't understand. Yeah. So it's a matter of trying to help them understand what you're going through as well. And yeah. so there's that balance point of understanding why you can't be there or why you have to do this for work or yeah. the people at work understand why you, it's important for you to prioritize taking off to go do something for your child um, or your spouse or, you know, something along those lines. So, you know, it, yeah. it's, you, it's really hard to find that balance point. And so having yeah. the experience in it, you know, makes it easier to be able to try to help others and, and, and help walk them down that path on how to make it easier for them. Right. Right. One of the great things that I've, that I've heard is that kids spell love T I M E. Especially when they're a little bit older, when they're younger, they don't get it. But when they're older, absolutely. Oh, you know, I, I, I have to time you'll spend the better they are. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I have to say that maybe, maybe kids don't remember it when they're super young, but I think they remember your presence. I think they remember that sense of security of you being there. So maybe they don't necessarily get it, but I still think that it, it affects them, you know, foundation. Oh, it absolutely so, affects them. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Like being there for their sporting events or their, yeah. um, or their extracurricular activities, just knowing that you're there, you know, that you're there supporting mm -hmm. them is a big, big deal. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something, especially as we're early on entrepreneurs, that, that I've, I've heard this story too many times. And so if, excuse me, if you're out there kind of thinking like, well, this doesn't apply to me. I mean, my, my family's fine. You know, they get it. They understand it. Uh, I, I hear the story and this goes both ways for men or women, you know, with, with their partners, you know, they, they come home one day and, and the spouse is gone and, and the kids are gone and they're wondering where they, they were, you know, they weren't, they weren't supposed to be going to wait. And they notice like maybe some of the stuff's gone, like some of the, the important items, like what, what's going on. And, and they end up calling the other person and, and it takes a while to get a hold of them. Finally, they get a hold of them and they say, look, we're, we're leaving. We just can't take it anymore. And, and maybe you got this big, beautiful house. Maybe you got nice cars, but, but they end up saying, you know, it wasn't about the house. It wasn't about the cars. It was, it was about you. I married you to be with you, not your stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and a lot of times, you know, you'll find that, that parents, as things get busy in life, you might end up just becoming roommates who happen to be parents just because life is so busy. So you've got to, you got to find that again, that balance point. It's, it, it's all about trying to find that, that balance point of, of being able to take care of your family, your spouse, and then also being able you know, ultimately, because part of that taking care of them is, you know, is your, your income. And so how you're able to, to balance those things. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people feel that they have uh, something in them that they want to give, you know, something, some, something bigger than them. And so, you know, that's a driving force. And, uh, but then they, they want to give that to their families. They want to show them love, but then they want to, they want to make that impact. They want to feel some sort of life of significance, some sort of purpose that drives them. Um, but then some people don't necessarily always know how to define like what it is. Like they know that there's something there that they know that they've got something great. Um, we were, when we were prepping for this, Brian, you, you had a great analogy, I think in terms of kind of like working backwards, like, like if you think about it, you know, you, you walk through a cemetery, just as an example, just thinking about life, you know, my mother passed away when I was nine. So, you know, we visit there, you know, at least once a year or at least try to. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I, I think about this at this time, but, you know, you, you look at the, the headstones and there's a, a beginning date and an end date. And, and everybody's got those, but it's like, what, what is it about? What's, what happens between it? Right. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, so it's that that dash there. That's 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 kind of the life, and that's that's what you want people to know about. So, you know, kind of like we were talking about that that that, that exercise is, is kind of go back and say, what do you want written on your tombstone? What did people think of you uh, for it? Or even go back even you know further than that. You know, what would two or three people, either uh, you know a family member, a friend, a customer, mm -hmm. an employee, what would they actually say about you at your eulogy? You know, and so that's your um, you know that 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 dash there that that's what you want to be known as is that you want to be known as 
a significant person in the community and you want to be known as you know the, the great parent the business owner um you know what is it that you want and that's what you got to kind of you know again as we say work backwards you know you got we've got our begin we don't know when our end is but getting to that end how do we work through it so if we know that we want to leave, leave some type of um, mark on, on this world what is that mark so figure mm -hmm. out what that is and then you can work towards it um, mm -hmm. and, and and really you know until i kind of took that perspective of what is it that i want people to think of me or say about me um you really can really just be kind of floundering out there until you really figure that part out. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really important to really, to, to, you know, it's kind of morbid to think of it that way, but you really need to, because again, you have that beginning and you have that end. So how do you, what, what is that middle part for? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody at, at your eulogy, if you imagine your eulogy, do you imagine people saying, wow, he always gave his family, nice house nice cars nice clothes or do you do you want people like really saying about how much you you really cared for people how much you you helped people how much love your kids knew that you had for them they sh and you showed them and 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 talk about the memories, the, memories. Of the times that you had together uh, my grandfather passed away recently and just listening to people share the memories of spending time with him and and my grandma and, and all that that was that was what was powerful no oh, absolutely you know my, my father passed a little over a year ago and we had um just through our the, the company that we sold to we still let everybody know you know that he had passed and they they, they had on their own it had simply asked um you know tell us any great stories about about you know, my father, and we ended up with, you know, emails, letters, um, you know, unbelievable amount of stuff of, of stories and things that I had never heard of, of them helping out people in the community or doing things, you know, in the middle of the night or on a holiday, you know, things that when I was little, I just, you know, I didn't remember or anything, but, but yeah, that's, you know, those are those, those types of things that how you re, you know, live your life is, is ultimately still how these people that you might not inter interact with very often still remember mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we don't want to leave you, leave you hanging, uh, on, on this too, in terms of kind of, how do you start bringing some more focus to what you want your life to look at and, and how you make sure that things are, that are important to you, your priorities are balanced. Um, one thing that I really love to start out with, uh, when we're working with clients is, uh, we talk about the wheel of success or you know, other people have called it the wheel of life. We've called it wheel of life in the past, but I mean, in, in so many times I, I've heard people like say, well, uh, success, why is success the most important thing? It's like, well, it's success doesn't, I, I'm not just talking about money. You know, when we talk about the wheel of success, we're talking about like those key areas of life that you define success. It could be your, your mental and your emotional state, spiritual connectedness, you know, safety, security, love and partnership, your legacy, your surroundings, you know, did you, did you ever achieve what you wanted to achieve, fun and recreation, health and fitness? I mean, all these things. I and mean, we actually have like 12 different factors that we, we encourage people to, to write what their 10 would be. Yeah. yeah so and, here's, uh, here's kind of what we have here. Yeah. yeah go go well, ahead and explain that, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have this, this wheel, we, we, you know, we call it the, the wheel of success. And so you put all of those, you know, those items, those, those 12 items up there. And then you kind of rank them between one and 10. And if it was a, you know, if everything was, you know, a 10, then it would be a perfect wheel and you'd be able to go down that road with no bumps in the road. However, life isn't that way. So, um, you know, as you go through life, you know, some areas might be a 10, some areas might be a one or two or three or four. And so as you're going, you know, that wheel, if you imagine that wheel rolling forward, you're going to hit a bump. And then you get to a good spot where you're good. And then also might you not get to another bump. But so it's a matter of taking kind of all of these areas and, you know, maybe not concentrating on so much ones that are the 10, but maybe those might fall back to an eight, but being able to concentrate on some of those other areas that you're, you're, you're lower in and bring those mm -hmm. up to try to bring that, you know, to bring yourself into a wheel where it is a little bit smoother. And then yeah. as that as you get to that more whole area of, of, of a round wheel, then you can start to increase the size of that wheel 
once you've mm-hmm. kind of balanced all kind of the, the points of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if you're listening just uh, on the radio, I'll try to uh, explain it too, because we kind of showed a video. So, you know, hit up our YouTube whenever we get this up and everything later, but um, so you can kind of see it. Um, but, but if the practice is, is that we have everyone write down what their 10 would be in each of these key areas of success in their life. And, and it's, it's highly subjective, whatever, whatever is important to them. Uh, cause some people, they might want a, you know, $10 million, a billion dollars, you know, that might be a 10 other people. They might just want, you know, to, to have a you know, $10,000 in the bank account or something, you know, it, it, it is very personal, it, you know, so. And there's no judgment about it. It's, it's what you feel would make you comfortable. And right. Cool for it. Right. There's, there's no right. judgment about it. Of course, you know, we, we encourage people to, to, to think big and, 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 and maybe even, even a little bit beyond that comfort zone, but, you know, at least we want to get an understanding first of what, what is comfortable to you? Where, where are you at, you know, with that? And, and there is absolutely no judgment. It's, it's just wherever you're at. So you, you write what your 10 would be. And then we've, we've got this, uh, this, this, this graphic, if you will. And it, and it looks like, a, a a wheel with little hubs or with, with little hub and, and spokes. Yeah. And each of those spokes is one of these success factors. And so on one of the spokes, you, you mark between zero and 10, you know, where you're at zero is kind of where the hub is, but then 10 is, is on the outer edge of it. So if you draw a dot then around all those success factors, you where know, you've rated yourself at on those, yeah. those things. Yeah, exactly. Where you've rated yourself that you can get an idea of kind of how well balanced you feel you are in terms of your needs, your wants. And, and it's powerful. Just like Brian was saying, if, if you hit a, a flat spot, if you hit a low spot, that's, that's where you feel the most pain in life. You know, that's where your the traction that you're trying to build up, it, it, it slows down or, or think about it whenever you hit stressful points. And if you hit a stressful point in one of those areas that are kind of weaker, that you're, you know, like, let's say you've got uh, you know, money and finances low for you. And you know, let's say you have, for the sake of the example, uh, a car problem, you know, typically those are costly. And and so those impact your finances even harder. So it's even more stressful for you. So we have to be able to to inflate those areas healthily and uh, not artificially, but uh, build up those areas so that uh, life can be a lot more smooth and that y- even when you're running into those hardships, it's not as impactful and you can keep that traction, keep the momentum going. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, it, and it's a great exercise just to kind of see where you're at and kind of take a step back and just look at things because everyone, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're usually so involved with your life that a lot of times you, you, you neglect to step back and just take a look at your life and where where maybe some of those problem points are and where some of the good points are, you know, and yeah. be able to reflect on it. It really helps. Yeah. And uh, if you if you want a, a copy of that, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to, to work with you work with you through it too. It's uh, if you just want to email me, uh, you can email me at Matt at entrepreneurs ascending.com or Matt at Matt Barbie.com. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you that to, to work through. Uh, but that's an important place to start. And, and what about mission and vision, Brian, when, when you really understood your mission and vision, how did that affect you in your HVAC company? Well, I mean, and I think it's, it, it's two, twofold. One, it was with, inside the company and then two is inside yourself. Um, so you kind of have to have two two different ones and hopefully they're pretty closely aligned uh, with what you're doing mm-hmm. going forward. But you, if you don't have where you're going, you know, it's, it's the roadmap, you know, the roadmap analogy. Mm-hmm. You know, where are you going to go if you if you don't know where, where, where you're heading, you're just kind of floundering, just driving all over the place. Um, so yeah. you've got to have that vision. you got to have that. What are you, what are you working for? You know, mm-hmm. and, and it's typically it's, and it's, should be one of those things that's really it's an uphill battle you know um, mm-hmm. if if it was level or, or downhill it would be easy and you wouldn't be working towards it but right you know it it, it has to be that uphill ba- battle to be always working towards that that vision and that mission that you're trying to establish for yourself yeah you know when you jump in the car and you're going to a place 
I mean, we jump in the car first of all. Like you want to know where you're going, right? Like, Absolutely. yeah, you, know, you have just, to know where you're going. <laughs> I mean, maybe if it's a nice Sunday drive. I don't know if people do those anymore, but I remember as a kid, yeah, sometimes you know you just drive around, or or I guess we're getting close to Christmas season. Sometimes drive there's a drive, drive around look at Christmas lights. You know, you might not necessarily have a specific destination in mind, but. But most of the time when you jump in the car, you you know where you want to go. You don't just jump in the car and be like, well, you know, I just I feel like eating something. You know, sometimes that happens. But, you know, I think at least in our family, we need to know like what restaurant you know, we're going to uh, before we jump in the car. And um, and why with the little things, why is it so important for us to figure out the destination and just kind of leave it up in the air for like one of the most biggest, the, the, the biggest things in our lives, you know? And then one of the most things things will take over though, as well. So you, you've <laughs> got to be able to to work at those little things too. Um, yeah, yeah. Because then, then they they just won't show up. Right. So I, I like to exa- uh, to to use the example of a mission and vision because a lot of people don't necessarily know the difference. The way that I explain it and the and the way we work through it is is a vision is like if you closed your eyes and and basically kind of that wheel of success. If you were to imagine what a tin would look like, actually, like try to put some some structure around some some structure that you can imagine you can see in your mind's eye uh because that's what drives you you know what what do you want your body to look like what do you want your office to look like your cars your house but what do you want to look family time to look like what do you want your vacations to look like right you know so you're thinking about kind of that that vision for the future but but for your business what do you want your impact to look like if so you, you have a mission of, of, of what you're trying to do on a day-to-day basis. You know, that's kind of what drives you and, and what you're doing regularly. But when your mission is achieved, what does your vision look like? How does the world, how has the world changed because of what you've done? And then that mission is, like I said, what you're doing on, on a day-to-day basis. Like what's, what's driving you, what kind of puts that fuel in the tank on a day-to-day basis. So, um, you know, for, for instance, you know, our vision you know, a time for success is I, I, we want a world full of faith, love, and abundance and, uh, and, and people feeling like they can have faith in something, each other, you know, yeah, we have our own, you know, r- religious, spiritual type faith, but, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's important that some, you know, everybody finds, finds that faith in, in, in confidence and, in, in something and that love and the abundance for the world. But, you know, our mission is, is better life by better business. You know, that's what fuels our tank is we're trying to help entrepreneurs create better life by creating better businesses. So I just gave you kind of an example. Absolutely. And yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, in, in all of those points, you know, kind of like what we, we also have what we call, you know, that, that, that skill versus fun matrix, you know, how, mm-hmm. how can we balance the, the things we enjoy doing versus the things we don't like doing, but then also the yeah. things that are important versus you know or urgent or, or very important mm-hmm. you need to do versus maybe some things that you don't necessarily have to do uh, yeah for it. So you- yeah no that's a great point that you brought that up and i did uh, i did print off a copy of that so that you kind of see it so uh, i'll explain it to the radio folks as well um but so we, the scale of fund matrix is basically you know if you draw a chart and uh the the up and down, the vertical axis is uh, where you put like the skill or the value of, of what you do. Because you can break this down kind of like the higher level of skill, the higher amount of money you pay somebody to, to do it for you, right? That you delegated or, or the higher value it brings to your business or, or your, your life. And then on the horizontal, you know, the, the left and right axis, you have the fun. Like what do you enjoy the most, right? And... Really, you should be, if you think about it and you, you draw little blocks. Um, so you, you should know, have nine blocks then. You should have nine blocks of three, low, three medium, high. And, yeah, three up and three to the right. Right. Low, medium, high. And if you know, if you want to simplify it, you could even just do low and high. You know, if, if you're not really sure where to put things. I'm, I'm all for simplification, at least, you know, the first time you do that exercise. But, but if you do that, you know, you should be living as much as you can. You should be striving for that top right box because that is the most that takes the highest level of skill your highest level of skill the highest value that you bring to the table as well as it's the most enjoyable everything else you should be working towards delegating especially in the bottom left where it's the low skill low fun get stop doing it like 
delegate that out. Make sure it gets done. I mean, you still got to make sure it gets yeah, done. Yeah, but... Monitor, but yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, look at virtual assistants. If if you don't, you know, if if, if you don't have the staff to help do it, yeah. a lot of times those virtual assistants are are mm -hmm. very inexpensive that can help do those things. Um, so yeah. that you can concentrate on those better, more profitable, and more fun things to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because think about the amount of money that you want to be making per hour or even that you bring to the table right now. Sometimes that might be low because you're working a lot of hours and, and not making as much money. But if, if you focus more on the revenue, the big ticket, the revenue generating items, and you are able to delegate most of the rest of the stuff out, you know, you're going to find that your business grows, and but you're actually even more profitable because you're, fig you're focusing on the bigger ticket items. The, the most the, the biggest revenue generators and and we'll talk in the next section about uh you know watching the profits and and how you do that but um but that's that's really where you need to be trying to move your your life and your time too yeah absolutely absolutely and and, and most people will take and spend the time because they think because okay well i can knock out these these mm -hmm. things that are um you know doesn't require much much my skill or or much of my time yeah, um, but they don't realize they're taking away from that time of the more productive or the more profitable things um, that they Absolutely. should be concentrating on. Absolutely, yeah. And, and there's so, also that the difference too between um, being busy and actually doing real work as well. So a lot yep. of times, yep. there's just busy work that makes you feel good because you're getting a lot accomplished, but is it really worth your time? Uh, right. For it? Right. Absolutely. Well, I just want to kind of close out this first, this first section uh, before we go to a commercial break. One other thing too is, okay, so motivation. So, so there's a lot to talk about procrastination. I think we'll need to do some future episodes on procrastination. I know that that, that is a, a big challenge for a lot of folks, but go back to our last episode as well, the episode number one. I started there with uh, motivation and health factors because for a lot of folks, they, they don't quite have the motivation they want and, and they, you know, they've tried They've tried uh, figuring out their vision and they're just not quite getting there. We'll, we'll talk in the future about how to get there and, and how to dig deeper there. But also, you need to be taking care of your health because all the vision in the world is 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 kind of useless if you don't have your health. And you, you don't have the energy. You know, you don't have the uh, the focus. And so it can really affect you. So please make sure you go back to episode one, watch that, and then watch out for future episodes. We're going to cover that more. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the commercial break. And um, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll the commercial break. Then we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, wealth, revenue, profitability, that sort of thing. So we'll see you then. Have you been suffering from chronic pain, disease, or sleep disorders? Did you know that 75 to 90% of disease is caused by inflammation in the body? The sad truth is, most doctors just treat symptoms rather than finding and fixing root causes of inflammation. If you want to fix your health problems, then finding and fixing the cause of the inflammation is a must. It's time to demand this for your health care and start living life to its fullest again. Book a discovery appointment with the Functional Health Team founder, Dr. Flory, to get your answers ASAP at www.functionalhealthteam.com. Hey, we're back. We're back, and uh, Dr. Flair was on episode one, and he talked uh, about that. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to have him on again and dig into that deeper because it is such a misunderstood uh, area of life. All right, so we're gonna talk in this section today about wealth, revenue, profit, sales, marketing, all you know, all that stuff. Uh, we've only got uh, about twenty minutes to dig into all that, so of course it's not going to be the end all be all. But there's a couple of key points that we wanted to hit on. Um, and uh, we're going to talk uh, about uh, solopreneur versus entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, solopreneur versus entrepreneur. I said that too fast for the impact that hopefully it had on you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about generational wealth. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know your your marketing, your revenue streams, and and uh, and your revenue pipelines and recruiting pipelines. And and uh, we're going to hit a little bit to upon. Um, five points of profit. It, it's, we're, we're going to hit upon a lot here, but uh, first of all, I want to talk about solopreneur to entrepreneur. When, when you first heard that, that phrase solopreneur to entrepreneur, Brian, how did that affect you? It really resonated with me. It, it really did. Um, yeah. That solo person is, is that person who's just kind of starting out and, 
and working hard and doing what they've got to do to, to establish that business. Um, mm -hmm. But are you wanting to stay as, as a solo or do you want to really truly grow into being an entrepreneur? And to yeah. do that, you've got to be able um, to move forward with things. And, and sometimes I think people are scared to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a, I mean, it, it really kind of hit home as you know, solo versus entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. A true entrepreneur is willing to do, you know, multiple things and, and keeping that, that vision out there and, and looking for new opportunities, even if it's not in an area that they have any expertise in, but they're just continually looking on how they can, can make themselves better. Yeah. Yeah. That entrepreneurial level, you know, they're really actually building an, an asset and, they understand that a business is not just a paycheck. It's actually meant to be an asset, something of value that you could sell um, or that you can you know, duplicate and replicate in other locations. And that right. and entrepreneur... If you're, there, go ahead. if you're not there, I'm sorry to cut you off there. No, you're good. <laughs> but if you're not, you know, if, if you remove yourself from that solo, you know, that solopreneur, then that business doesn't exist anymore. Where at right. the entrepreneur level, if you remove yourself it should still be able to sustain itself and, and grow and continue to mm -hmm. move forward. Yeah. You know, an entrepreneur, typically they've got some vision for like some next level challenges or maybe some additional businesses, some additional investments, or, or maybe they want to do take, you know, they, they want to, they want to take some time with the family because they've worked so hard. That's cool too. But they, you know, they, they've got to, they've got to, be thinking about how do I, how do I equip and empower? How do I delegate and automate myself to freedom, as opposed to having to be the the owner operator and being there every day and got all the sales rely on me. Yeah, quit quit being so ego driven. <laughs> That's the challenge here again. This, this, really this is. is this is not just a podcast. This is this is a call to action. Quit feeding your ego because your ego leaves broken relationships it leaves money on the table it's not really that important feed into what's what again like if you if you look at those success factors where what is truly important what is truly important actually i hear a lot of people talk about i want to build a million dollar business that's your ego talking that's your ego talking they just want to be able to say they're they're owner of a million dollar business yeah yeah because you got or, a million or, dollars, or just like the other, you know, in, in general, even just um, normal people, you know, yeah. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, you know, that's that's the the quote quote goal. I want a hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's my income. Yeah, I want. yeah, yeah. Because, you know, and, you know, if, if you're living well below, well below those means, you don't need that amount of money. And you're, if you're happy, you know, so what what does it matter? You know, you could have a, a very wealthy person who is you know in debt up up to their eyeballs. Well, and, but they and that's say, say they're 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 you know they're making a hundred two hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because okay, so let me put some context to this too, because I know that there's a lot of business coaches out there that are like always you know ten x what you want to do, and and I and I love the ten x idea. I really really do because it does challenge you to think differently because you can't just work you harder and ten x, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, because Grant Cardone talks a lot about the 10X. He wrote the 10X rule uh, book. And, and I read that book. I do like that a lot because it does challenge you to think bigger. And 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 I'm not encouraging anybody. I mean, we're not encouraging anybody to, to limit themselves on what they can do. But, you know, I, and but if if you're doing that for the sake of what's really what, what really is important in your life, if you feel like you're leaving other things behind that's important you're not balancing things out well right you 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 you're you're leaving behind the relationship you know for the revenue and and uh and and you know if if revenue if money is the most important thing to you and you don't care about you know the relationships in your life you know what there are some people that's their value system and i'm not going to necessarily knock that either you know because if that's your value system that's what you want you know, more power to you, but most people really do care about the relationships in their life. So, so don't, don't necessarily sacrifice it. Learn how to improve your skills though, so that you can have both. Right. Absolutely. Because, because here's another thing too, that, that, you know, I want to be careful about that line of thinking of just getting comfortable uh, because of, of the idea of generational wealth. Now, this is something that I think a lot of folks overlook and I'm going to be candid, especially uh, middle-class you know, Caucasians 
you know, we kind of overlook this idea of generational wealth, but it has really helped our communities be a lot stronger and healthier. And, and so it, so we don't necessarily have to think about it, but there's a lot of minorities that I, and minority groups that, that, you, there, there's a lot of conversations going on about this because it is so important because small business and, and the, the local wealth that that provides for the community is, is absolutely it's essential. It, it, absolutely essential. Like, because a, a stronger local, a stronger local businesses create stronger local economy, which creates a stronger local a community because there's more money to go around, right? More people are employed, uh, that money goes into the nonprofits. That money goes into even the the roads and the parks and the and and the the police systems and the social systems and and all that locally. So, but but generational wealth is also how we we pass on and make sure that our kids are able to continue to elevate and go up to that next level. You know, just think about it. Like you know, you want to give them as as great of a foundation to to launch off you know their life. As, as possible because that helps them to achieve a higher level and then their kids are going to be able to achieve a higher level but so many people get stuck and well i'm i'm running a business and i'm okay i'm okay you know we're i'm working a lot of hours but you know hard work it, you know it, it makes me feel good okay that's great but 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 i'm going to challenge you in that a little bit that are you are you really thinking about wealth creation it does i'm not necessarily talking about a bazillion dollars right but something that you're going to be able to, to, to grow and, and teach your kids how to grow, teach your kids how to build generational wealth. What, you know, and it's not necessarily what you're leaving behind to your kids. It's more or less, what are you teaching them and how to become successful going mm -hmm. forward? And yeah. if some of the yeah. generational wealth allows them to do that, that's the point behind it. Not mm -hmm. just say I I want to leave my kids X amount of dollars. Yeah, yeah. There's wealth of knowledge, and then there's the the wealth and the actual money, and and so you, it, again, it's a deeply personal issue. But I want to get you thinking about like, okay, it's not just about you know working hard and being okay okay today. I mean that's great, but think about what is the legacy, the legacy that you're leaving behind with your kids. How are you equipping them? You know, what are you giving them in terms of that that generational wealth? What are you passing on, right? So, so a couple of uh, quick things that you know they're, they're not quick things. There's a lot of I, I guess you know there there there's a lot more depth that we could go into, but we, we don't have this, all this. This is going to be today. very high level of, uh, of, of right, these, right. Uh, these points here. So right, right. So when we're talking about um, you know sales and marketing and revenue and 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 profit. Um, going back to this idea of uh, of of revenue being kind of like a, that number being kind of ego driven. If 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 you build a million dollar business, but you're in the red every month, you know you're negative, or you've barely got enough money to pay your own bills, and and you know, your cash flow is killed. You know your cash flow has cash flow is like these big ups and downs, and and uh, you know, you're, it, it's hard for you to pay bills on time. You're 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 wrecking yourself. So you know, we we want to encourage you to figure out and and take some of this knowledge and start applying it to your business. How do you create a more profitable bills, business, a, a wealthier business, not just a, a high level revenue business? Get Quit get good about that. Net, quit worrying about that high number and, and worry about that net number. You know, what does right. that net number need to be? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So first of all, a concept that a lot of folks don't necessarily know about is are the, the five points of profit. And there's really these five key numbers in your business that, that you need to be tracking every day to understand not only you know, how healthy is your business right now, but, you know, looking at where it's going to be in the, in the future as well, because that's these five numbers are the the number of leads that are coming in first of all you need to know how many people are showing some interest in your business and then the conversion rate so how many of those leads end up becoming a customer what what percentage rate is that the customer the number of customers you know that's that's a result of good lead generation strategies and good sales strategies and those are two things that you control can control directly 
you know, you can only point a gun at somebody's head and say, give me your money so many times. It's not really a good customer acquisition strategy. <laughs> Just trying to force people into it. Right. Um, not, not long-term. Um, so you have to have good lead generation and good conversion rate, good sales strategy. So those are the two numbers, lead, con lead conversion rate. And then you need to know how often people are buying from you. Right. So, that third number is the number of transactions that clients have with you. So how frequently are they buying from you? And then how much money do they spend per transaction, right? Um, because if you can increase the amount of money that they spend per transaction, then, you know, through bundling or adding additional services or upsells, cross sells, if you can increase that, it makes your life easier because you've already spent your money in lead acquisition costs, right? So, you know, the, the more that you can make that as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Offer your full full gamut of right, right. Or Absolutely. The other side of it, unbundling to, to be able to get yeah. it as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So that that fourth number is the amount of money per transaction. That final number is really your gross margin. How much money you are making after a job's completed. So after the money that you spent for that you know, customer acquisition costs and how much money I, I like to include that in there as well, because a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't include that in there, but you need to know how much money you spend to get that customer, to get that job or to, you know, sell that service or sell that product. And then how, you know, that the co cost of goods sold is the way that we talk about it, like with the product, but it's basically, you know, that gross margin, anything that went into fulfilling for that customer could be, you know, delivery costs, it could be, um, you know, gas. Uh, it could be you know, supplies, labor. You know, those kind of things that go into actually delivering on, you know, fulfilling on whatever the offering was that you offered. So, if you know those five numbers, you're you're much farther ahead than most people in terms of understanding how profitable, you know, your offering is. So again, it's leads, conversion rate, the amount of or the number of transactions per customer, the amount of money per transaction, and you know your gross profit margin. And a lot of you know, small business, unfortunately, they lead with their gut and they don't mm -hmm. know the numbers. You know, and you, you think, okay, that high number, man, I'm doing great this year. I'm I'm almost at a million dollars, or I'm over a million mm -hmm. dollars already for the year, so I'm doing great. But they don't mm -hmm. know what those other numbers are. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and you, you've got to know any business owner has to at least know the very basics of the financials to know right, where right. At. And I know for a lot of folks, when you start talking about numbers, like the, the eyes kind of glaze over and it becomes really boring. But guess what? When you learn how to control your numbers and you see those numbers increase, it gets a lot more fun. <laughs> so it's a game. You, you, get, right. and you try to gamify it. You know, right. You, you make, make it easier, make it fun. Yeah. But, but the other important part of, uh, like I was saying, that there's, there's predictors and then there's the, those lagging indicators of where you are. <clears throat> if you're only looking at, excuse me, if you're only looking at, you know, your, your profit and loss statements, you're, you're looking at a lagging indicator. But if you know your averages of those five numbers that we talked about, the five points of profit, you can start projecting how much money you're bringing in just based on how many leads are coming in. If you know your average conversion rate for, for the leads that are coming in and you're able to actually predict your overall profits from that, and think how powerful that is. Because if you're not having enough leads coming in, you know that you need to ratchet up your marketing rather than looking at it at the end of the month being like, man, we didn't do very much business this month. What happened? Well, it's too late at that point. You know, your bill collectors are not going to be like, well, yeah, we'll just make it up next month. It's fine. Most people aren't like that, right? So if you can be monitoring how many leads that you're supposed to be getting in per per week, per day, uh, especially for restaurants, this is huge. I mean, you got to know by like by by like noon, <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit later, one or two, depending on what food you serve and what meals and all that stuff. But I mean, you need to know like almost by the hour of what's going on. Otherwise you, know, you might have need to send out some text message marketing, put some stuff on your social media, you know, try to drive some more, put somebody out in a monkey suit with a sign 
out on the on, out on the road because you, you know you need to be able to pivot because you got people who want to be paid that day you've got food costs you know all that stuff so there's some businesses that's even more important to really know that and monitor those numbers consistently regularly like that and and, and not let it it fall to the wayside Absolutely. so um and here's another thing that i just want to kind of hit upon too um so we talked a little bit about time and delegation before right you have to have good people though to do that and, and a lot of people kind of push off marketing don't realize how it's important how important it is but right now we're in the the great resignation right we've got people who are leaving companies right and left and people don't understand why they can't find good help. Guess what? If you've got good marketing, it fills two funnels, okay? It fills the revenue funnel and the recruiting funnel, the two R's of marketing, revenue and recruiting. You need to have those funnels filling up constantly in your business if you wanna be able to have the right people to delegate to and control your time. And if you wanna have the revenue that you want to be able to, to have the profits that you want, right? So. Don't underestimate marketing and, and don't think it's 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 something that should just happen passive or just necessarily just with referrals. It's just going to come naturally. That's a, the slow way to build a business. You know, you have to you have to understand that 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 you need a market dominating position. You need to understand how to create the right kind of message that inspires people and gets them to to want to buy from you and and where so so that that message you need to is call like more the, the disruptor yeah. though yeah every you know if, if you if your typical marketing message is the same as your competitors mm -hmm. then what do you do you're gonna resort to price for yeah it. Um, yeah so you have to be you have to make yourself different um, mm -hmm. and call that you know that disruptor what are you different from your competitor and right. that's what you got to right. market right and then that can also play along to your culture too um, you know, because people like to do business with people that they like. And mm -hmm. if they see your company having a good culture and doing things in the community and being, you know, present, they're more likely going to want to do something with mm -hmm. you just because they feel good about you and your company. Absolutely. So, you know, and to be, to be able to have the wealth that you want to have, you have to buy into the idea that there's there's more wealth to be had that you can take things to a higher level that it is important to create generational wealth and wealth for yourself and your business is key is really what you should be trying to build not just you know a great name not just a big number but but wealth in your business and then you have to know your numbers you have to understand the impacts of your efforts you have to be able to measure those and you have to create the kind of business that people want to work with and for that attracts great customers and great employees. Right. And, and those, and like I said, it, it's a great dual funnel. If you're mm -hmm. creating one, you're working towards the other. And if you're working on the other, it's mm -hmm. creating your marketing funnel. So it, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 they go hand in hand nowadays, especially with the labor mm -hmm. shortage that's there. Yeah. Yeah. And having that market dominating position, people want to work for the disruptors. They want to work and because they want to feel like they're they're doing something different, that they're changing the world, changing. that they're making an impact, especially the younger generation. They want to know that they're changing the world. They've been beaten into their head that, you know, climate change is, is going to kill them all. I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not necessarily saying climate change isn't real or anything like that, you know, but but what I'm saying is, is that like younger generations believe that something's going to kill them. So they want to try to do something to change the world. I, I've, I've been talked to a lot of like folks and, and, and I'm not, I'm not exacerbating this by any means, exaggerating or anything like this. It truly is like talking to folks. It's, 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 sad. it's, it's, it's that, yes, they, they want to be able to do that and they want yeah. to, they want to work and make a difference mm -hmm. uh, for it. And they might not necessarily want a lot of money to do it. They're, they're, you know, they, they are a little bit different where they want to mm -hmm. make that difference. Yeah, and but to be able to not be important. Yeah, or ask yeah, but, but at the end of the day, I mean, you need great people working for you. You need people, great people who are working on your mission with you. And that's why we talk about the mission. That's why we're talking about this wealth all together, this time and delegation. I mean, this is really all very, very strongly connected in, people, in ways that people don't connect the dots. And, and so we're trying to connect some of these dots for you 
to to help you understand why it's it's important not to just kind of passively just you know do good enough uh, quit quit just doing good enough you've got so much impact that you can make on people's lives lives if you if you understand these concepts um, and, and one other tool, because we're going to be wrapping up here in a second, but one other tool I wanted to just bring to your attention, and uh, Jason, Jason's uh, uh, our engineer uh, in, behind the scenes, keeping everything running for us. If you can uh, run that link again, I'm going to give everybody uh, uh, access to our monthly marketing planner, and this helps you to better understand how much money you're investing in your marketing and what results that you're getting. And there's actually a free training for this. So if you go to tools tfsstl.com forward slash all caps mmp it is all caps it is cap sensitive because i only want people who uh who, who are paying attention to get it right so all right so there's this uh this marketing planner out there you can download this tool there's a free training but it does help you to better capture and understand and, and evaluate how much money you're investing in your marketing get your conversion rates, your return on investments, uh, your cost per leads, cost per new customer. You know, it'll it'll do all those calculations for you if you just put in the numbers. Um, and uh, so I just wanna make sure that you knew that you had that available for you. Make sure you go out there and get that. But kind of to wrap up today's show, you know, we talked about uh, time versus money. And you can't have both. You can have the freedom that you want to seek to do the things that you love with the people that you love. And you can have the wealth that you can pass on of knowledge, skills, money to make sure that your kids are going to be able to keep leveling up and helping their kids keep leveling up as well. So don't underestimate your ability to impact these lives. Don't underestimate how important it is for you to spend time with your family and they as much as they want to understand, um, it's not the same as actually having you there. And uh, so please, please uh, take into this account. Make sure that you uh, you know build out your vision, understand where you have your where you are in that wheel of life. Again, if you want that, um, just email me at matt at mattbarbie dot com. I'll email that. Uh, I'll I'll send you the wheel of life uh, for you to to work on. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, you know, we can shoot back forth email. I'm, I'm happy to help. Uh, plus, don't forget about our free group coaching um, that we do uh, every month. And I'm going to put that uh, in the, uh, here we go. It's it's freebusinesscoaching.eventbrite.com to register. And uh, you know, we give out more tools and strategies each month as well with that. But if you're looking to take your business to the next level, please reach out. And we're here to do one-on-one -on -one services as well. So if it's if it's time to, to what was that? To be glad to help the to let yeah. to, to, to let them know and use our experience to help grow your business. Absolutely. You know, don't you don't have to do it alone. And doing it alone leaves a lot of stress and a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted money. So you know, please let us help you out. And uh, thanks, Brian, so much for being on the show thanks today. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. it. Thanks. Thank you for being with us today. But now is the time to put what we talked about into practice. Remember, your family, employees, and community are depending on you to rise up and win. The great news is you're not alone. You're part of a resurgence of entrepreneurs who are ready to take their business, life, and impact to the next level. And we're going to do it together. This show is powered by Time for Success, where we help business owners every day who want more freedom and wealth while building a legacy of positive impact. Please follow Time for Success on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube for more helpful strategies and tools for creating the business and life of your dream.